McGill's McDonald campus, home to classrooms, research labs, greenhouses, and agricultural facilities. In the summer, these buildings require cooling, hot water, and ventilation. And in winter, heating demand is significant. The campus was originally designed with a central powerhouse that produced steam to provide heat, hot water, humidification, and sterilization in research labs. The steam was channeled to the various buildings through a network of tunnels. When McGill transferred a large portion of the land to John Abbott College in 1971, the location of the powerhouse was no longer ideal for the buildings it served. And over time, the tunnels and other infrastructure started to deteriorate. A substantial amount of heat was being lost in the distribution process. Rather than fix and maintain a hundred-year-old system, it made more sense to replace it with a newer, more efficient one. One that would showcase innovative approaches to energy conservation at McGill. In 2010, we hired an energy consulting firm to study the situation and make recommendations. They started with an energy consumption analysis for the entire campus. Each source of energy use was detailed in this graph. The McDonald Stewart building has the highest consumption. This is not surprising as it is a large building, plus it has many research labs that contain a major source of energy consumption, fume hoods. Fume hoods keep the air clean in labs by pulling in fresh air that has to be heated and humidified in the winter and cooled and dehumidified in the summer. This requires a lot of additional energy. In fact, fume hoods that are in continuous operation can consume as much energy as four typical Canadian households. The second biggest energy loss was heat loss from sources such as combustion and from the steam network. The consulting firm studied 42 energy conservation measures. After a thorough selection process, there remained a pool of innovative measures. From this pool, three proposals emerged as the best options. Proposal 1 involved natural gas as the main energy source. Proposal 2 involved extracting heat from the water of the nearby St. Louis Lake. And Proposal 3 involved a biogas system that would process waste from the campus and the municipality of St. Anne de Bellevue. All three involved switching from steam to warm water to allow efficient heat recovery from fume hoods and growth chambers. They also included a range of traditional measures, such as insulation, and an intelligent system matching energy use to time of day and the number of people using the building. All three would also build the foundation to include renewable energy technologies in the future, such as ground heat exchange for all seasons and solar panel installations. After consultation with the McDonald campus community, the hydrothermal and biogas proposals were deemed too expensive and too risky, so the standard natural gas proposal was chosen as the best solution. After a period of planning and design, a new location was chosen for the powerhouse, closer to the end users. And in spring of 2015, the first ground was broken. Renovations also got underway in other buildings across campus. Heat exchangers were added to recover heat that would normally be lost from fume hoods, air exhausts, and growth chambers. Variable frequency drives were installed on fans, and mixing boxes in McDonald Stewart were upgraded so that ventilation could vary with the time of day. Brand new boilers and a hot water distribution center were upgraded, and automation systems and building controls were upgraded to better meet user needs. By fall 2015, eight months after breaking ground, construction came to a close. The heart of the project, the new powerhouse, features large windows that provide natural light for workers and allow a clear view into the plant. In January 2016, the system became fully operational and is now in the commissioning phase to ensure that the final construction and quality matches the design. The goal at McDonald campus is to achieve 90% renewable energy, and with this project, we have moved significantly closer to that mark. As renewable energy sources become available, they can be plugged in. CO2 emissions have been reduced by 45%, which is the equivalent of taking more than 400 cars off the road. Financially, the project will be beneficial to McGill. 
Energy savings are expected to be half a million dollars annually, allowing us to pay back the initial $6 million loan by about 2030. At McGill, we promote environmental awareness and sustainability through courses and other initiatives. This engineering project is a real example of integrating current and renewable energy technologies to help preserve the environment and save costs now and into the future.